Hi, my name's Rust. I'm a Soulsborne content creator with an emphasis on PvP. If you spent any time at all playing PvP in the past year, then you've probably noticed a rise in the prevalence of big, massive weapons with insane values of hyper armor and ashes of war like Sword Dance, Storm Assault, and Spinning Slash on Twin Blades. What you're witnessing is the rise of the hyper armor meta. If you don't have a hyper armor of your own, then it can feel like an uphill battle as your opponent belligerently mashes into you with their big metal meat stick. Oh. So I'm here to tell you how to deal with them with various strategies. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you found this information helpful at all, or if you're just more confused than ever. Before we get into how to counter hyper armor, first we have to understand how it works. Hyper armor is an added value of poise that increases the user's resistance to stagger during certain attack animations. Hyper Armor only exists during Hyper Armor frames of these attacks, but some things have faster startup on their Hyper Armor frames than others. For example, a standard Great Swords rolling attack has Hyper Armor that starts on the 10th frame, whereas a Serpent Hunter has Hyper Armor that starts on the 7th frame. These three frames make a very significant impact on gameplay, and in either case, the startup of Hyper Armor is unreactable, and if the opponent ever chooses to go for attack at the same time as you do, then your attack will not be fast enough to stop them from getting into hyper armor frames. What we're talking about here is a concept of priority. Priority is determined by whoever has the winning button press if both players click the attack button at the same time. If we're both standing in neutral and I have a straight sword while you have a great sword, you have priority in the situation and I'm going to have to outplay you in order to safely land a hit. Sure, I could just swing randomly and hope it works but I'm gambling on the chance that you don't happen to click the attack button at roughly the same time as I do. Whereas, from your perspective, you're incentivized to click the attack button any time that I'm within your range in order to stop me from making random attacks like that. But once a move is made, then things begin to change. In this matchup where the attacker has hyper armor and the defender doesn't, if the attacker makes a move and the defender is forced to roll to hit, then the defender will stay in disadvantage since any attempted follow-up swing from the attacker will get into hyper armor frames early enough to trade with the attempted rolling attack. However, if they go for an attack and the defender manages to outspace the hit, then for a short window of time, the defender has priority. This window is relative to how many frames between hyper armor that the opponent has. In this situation, where the defender outspaces the hyper armor user's attack, the attacker is now in a position where it's in their best interest to respect the opponent's priority and time a roll to avoid getting punished. But the hyper armor provided by the attack gives them a massive safety net, and if the hyper armor user correctly predicts that the defender will try and delay their attack for a roll catch, then instead of relying on good roll discipline to get out safely, then they can just attack again, and the hyper armor will prevent them from getting stunned by the attempted roll catch and force a trade. The timing of this is rather sinister, where the timing of the attempted roll catch would land roughly at the same time when hyper armor starts on a follow up swing. This means that any attempt to go for a roll catch against a hyper armor user is a massive risk. But let's say you land a punish, and you get the hyper armor into hit stun. Congratulations! You did it! You finally overcame the oppressive force of your opposition, and you came out on top! Tell us, how do you feel right now? Oh good, I feel amazing! I had to work really hard, I perfectly outspaced the hit, and I caught them right as they exited their attack animation! That's incredible! How did you manage to land the hit? Oh, it was great! I turned right as they whiffed, and I got them with my Katana R1! Oh. A, a Katana R1? Oh, bad choice. Given by the fact that hyper armor starts so early in an attack animation, unless you're using a weapon that has a damage level 2 stun, then your attack won't stun the hyper armor long enough to keep them from mashing out. If you manage to land a hit, and your opponent has enough passive poise to tank your backswing, then you are never safe to go for a follow up swing. The opponent will always be able to mash out a hit stun fast enough to interrupt you. There are only two setups in the game that can safely and reliably mash into hyper armor without getting punished, being power stance straight swords and a two-handed shamshir. Shamshir has the fastest backswing with the shortest recovery in the game, and while the backswing doesn't deal enough poise damage to prevent a mash from optimized builds, they will always be able to roll out in time to avoid getting hit by the mash. For everything else, single katanas, straight swords, funny, weird, main hand, off hand setups, 
unless the opponent's passive poise is super low, then get fucked and get back in line, it ain't your turn to play the video game. So that's where we bring in weapons with a level 2 stun. Weapons with a level 2 stun have enough of a stun duration that they're generally able to get in at least one more hit before they're forced to back off. Such as in the case of Halberds, a mainhand Halberd can always safely go for a follow-up attack with any offhand weapon. However, they won't be able to follow up into another Halberd hit before the opponent can get into Hyper Armor frames. Understanding your priority will prevent you from eating a face full of damage for absolutely no reason. If you can't keep priority after your attack, then you need to respect your opponent's potential to mash out a hit stun and play defensively. On the turn that you're going to lose priority, the safest and most consistent option is to peel away from the opponent to a safe distance and be prepared to punish any attempt to mash out a hit stun. You can do this with anything from a normal R1 to a jumping attack, depending on your positioning and timing. I find it really consistent to peel just outside of mashing range and then turn back around with a jumping L1, which will come out just in time to either punish an attempted mash or catch a panic roll if they roll directly away, thereby killing two birds with one stone. Otherwise, if you're using a weapon that maintains priority on second swing, such as Shamshir or Power Stance Straight Swords, then you can adjust your timing to roll catch if the opponent starts to respect your backswing. Backstabs do not give a shit about hyper armor, and if you can line up a grab, then no amount of hyper armor will stop you from landing it. If you stun the opponent with a weapon that deals at least a level 2 stun, then you can handy tech by simply swapping to a dagger, and strafe just about any weapon if they try and mash out a hit stun. If they mash, then you can position yourself at their back and get a grab. Some things are easier to backstab than others. Halberds and Great Spears are fairly easy, and Great Swords and Colossal Swords are a bit more difficult. Additionally, people using great weapons are generally incentivized to roll in toward you so that they can assert their dominance with their oversized, but definitely not overcompensating, big sword, strong Big sword. and strong and thrusting you are, just thrusting repeatedly over and over again so hard, there, thrusting them into the sky, strong, ripped, th thick body. Oh. But in doing so, they open themselves to being roll caught on a forward roll. Now, you can go for a standard roll catch and hope that you time it well enough to get in between the overlapping iframes and hyper armor frames, or you could just backstab them and once again ignore their hyper armor. Given by the fact that weapons with hyper armor can so freely mash up a hit stun against smaller weapons, it actually becomes favorable when setting up parries. If you run into an opponent that frequently attacks at a hit stun, then you can use a parry tool as a way to punish the attempted mash. Parry timings are rather precise, and I have a full video covering the topic, but if you're just tired of working your ass off trying to outplay these people with hyper armor setups, then you can always just swap to something with enough poise damage to stop their mash. Spinning Slash, Sword Dance, and Stormcaller are all valid options and allow you to muscle through opposing hyper armor but nothing beats a good old Guggs. Get yourself a glass of wine, throw on some music, and enjoy a night of thrusting with your big hard metal meat stick. So at this point, you're probably wondering, and possibly already made a hate thread on Reddit about how pissed you are that I'm spreading propaganda that the only way to play against Hyper Armor is to play like a passive little bitch and do nothing but with punish. But here's the reality. Either you play like a bitch and exercise good spacing, roll discipline, and well executed punishes, Otherwise, you can pick up Hyper Armor of your own, and you can engage in the seamless gameplay loop of trading into each other indefinitely until whoever has the better gaming chair takes the W. Personally, I find the latter much less enjoyable than trying to use skills and fundamentals to earn me my wins rather than the fucking brain dead shit of whatever this is. But that doesn't mean that you have to play like an absolute gremlin either. From this point in the video, I'll be showcasing the concepts to give you some insight on how priority actually plays out in a real fight, and walk you through the decision making process as I deal with these types of weapons. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let's get into the fights. For these fights, I'll be using four different setups to demonstrate the concepts covered in the video, being katanas, followed by shamshir, straight swords, and finishing off with gugs. My first opponent is using a great sword, and we start off by punishing the R2 after his roll, and following up with a jump attack. I disengage in case he mashes, and catch a forward roll, and look to see if he's going to roll forward again. I punish the R2, and he immediately follows up with Piercing Fang, which gives us the kill. The next fight is against Shunter, and we start off with a nice whiff punish, 
but miss the jump attack. I avoid his and punish with a crouch attack and strafe in case he tries to mash. Now that we reset to neutral, he has priority again, and I look for a clear opening. And I take it on his whiff running attack, finishing the fight with an unsheath. My next opponent leads off with Flaming Strike, which we're too late to punish. The follow-up on Flaming Strike has extremely fast recovery, so you have to be really tight on your timing to actually punish it. I eat jump attacks fairly often that I thought that I had outspaced, so I end up missing the punish on this one, having space too far out for both hits to land. I move past him and go to grab the backstab on the running attack, but I was too slow to get around, and get punished for it. He goes for a Flaming Strike again, and this time I get a solid hit and finish the fight with an unsheathed roll catch. My next opponent is running PSGS, which doesn't innately have hyper armor, but they have a super fun and interesting Ash of War called Storm Assault, which I like to tank with my face. Storm Assault doesn't keep priority after it lands, so I go for an R1 straight out of hit stun, and then I avoid a couple of crouch posts to get out of the vortex. So I have to play very patiently into it in case he, never mind, he swapped over to Shunter. So I space out a hit and go for a roll catch, but miss. Bait a whiff and then grab the back as they roll by. My next opponent comes out of the gate with a running attack that falls short. I peel before jumping in and roll catch the panic roll. I peel again since I don't have prio here and punish the sword dance. They sword dance again and I roll through and finish the fight. My next opponent is running the Dragon Halberd, and we start out the fight by outspacing the running attack, but too late to punish. I jump in and take a trade, and I toggle to go for a strafe, but they manage to roll out of the grab. I outspace the jump attack and go for a fish, this time having frame advantage and landing the grab. For the next fight, we find out pretty quickly that the lad is pretty shit, to say the least. And after I land the first hit, I end up rolling away from it, thinking that I might have missed. We get another roll catch, and again, roll away, for the same reason. But now that I know that they like to roll forward, I line up grab and get my fish. But from this point on, we have Shamshir. Shamshir has an absolutely free backsway, making it able to be played a lot more aggressively than Kiva's. I space out the R1, punish, and land a backswing which poise breaks. This is an important note. You need, absolutely need, to be running 88 poise, otherwise you will just be bullied by Shamshir. Its backswing is incredibly strong, so against this opponent, I can just mix between going for the backswing or block cancelling to roll catch if they try and avoid the backswing. Next up, we see his buy, and we start off the fight by grabbing a roll catch on their forward roll, but I don't go for the backswing, just to see how they're going to play. I dodge the mash and jump back in with a JR2. I jump back in, and seeing that they jumped as well, I delay and roll out to avoid their jump attack. I bait out a roll and grab a roll catch, avoid the mash, and go back in for another hit. Space out expecting the mash, and finish the fight with the backswing. Next up, my opponent is using a two-headed Moogs. They go for an empty jump, which I punish, space out the mash, and go back in on their whiff jump attack. Get the backswing, and space back out to avoid the hit, and punish the whiff with two more hits to finish the fight. At this point, I'll be showcasing straight swords. The fight starts out as I grab a roll catch, and space out the expected mash, and grab a roll catch as they roll by. I punish the whip rolling attack with a regular R1. At this point, they're very low health and can't really afford a trade, and they go for a charge R2 from neutral, and I finish the fight with a crouch poke of my own.
The next fight starts off as my opponent tries to get fancy and goes for a backstep attack. I land two hits to punish, and then soft swap my offhand to second straight sword. This is something called handy tech, which basically lets me recover a little bit faster and get out of range in case they try and mash. Handy tech has a lot of use cases, but on straight swords it's borderline broken. You can use it out of a roll to give you immediate sprint speed, or after an attack to cancel your recovery, similar to how blocking does. We trade back swings, and that puts them at very low health, where they can no longer really afford to trade. So they change up their playstyle and play a little bit more defensively. But all it takes is one good string of hits to effectively nuke my health bar, so I continue to play patiently and look for a good opening. I catch them off guard with a beast roar, hoping to draw them in. At this point, I'm not really getting anywhere, so I finish the fight with a quick little poke. The next fight is against another Zvi, but with offhand straight sword. I grab a roll catch as they whiff their crouch poke, and fall back in case they mash. After an R1 with a single straight sword, you don't keep priority even if you switch to L1s, and I have no plans of eating a colossal sword to the face. I land a jump in as a roll catch, and roll out of their mash. PSSS is honestly one of the best setups in the game, having the best of all worlds from its nuclear damage, short recovery, consistent poise breaks, and frame trap on its backswing. But that doesn't mean that you generally have to play like an idiot. You still have to exercise good fundamentals in order to get your wins. Where Power Stance Straight Swords lacks is... Well... Actually, I, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, no, it's just kind of broken. Um, it works well against Hyper Armor. Moving on to the last weapons that I'll be using for this showcase, we have Colossal Swords. And for our first fight, I'm using his Vi. I look to go for a roll catch on their second panic roll, but my opponent goes straight for the roll poke and interrupts my attempt. I land a jump attack and follow it up with a quick poke as they try and space the hit. They go for a jump, but my hit pulls them out of the air, and from there I stay close but don't press the attack since my stamina is so low. They whiff a jump attack, and I follow their roll and grab the fish to finish the fight. Now this guy had a very good adaptation at seeing my Gugs, and he swapped over to Barbaric Roar Fist Weapons. Barbaric Roar gives a modified R2 that has enough poise to let them tank even a hit from a Colossal Sword and stun me back in return. The only downside is that it's fucking slow. So, if the Colossal Sword user respects the priority of the R2, then it's very difficult to land the Barbaric Roar R2. But, it works very well to prevent a Vortex. There's often a lot of complaints about this game and how tryhard Metalords all play super passively and how it's incredibly frustrating to play against. But let me tell you, it's extremely frustrating to play against Hyper Armor Spam and have to sit in line waiting your turn to play the video game, or else you get punished for literally doing anything. It sucks. It sucks for both sides. But what helps is knowing your priority, and when it's safe, and when it's not, to make a move. Once you have a clear idea of how these interactions work, then you can start incorporating mix-ups, roll catches, combos, pseudo-combos, feints, or whatever else you can come up with to diversify your gameplay. But you have to have your fundamentals down. Practice learning these specific interactions of different matchups, and learn how to work around their weaknesses. So that's going to do it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.